in our last video in problems one and two we were dealing with molarity of nitric acid from the perspective of a no of an unknown or known number of moles we really didn't have to bring in the issue of mass here we're going to do a couple of problems where mass is a factor in the in the solid so problem three is how many grams of nitric acid are needed for to make a 2.9 liter solution of a 0.15 molar concentration in this case we have to solve for moles first we can't directly use molarity to find grams needed if this is a moles to liters ratio so we simply solve for moles and then we get out our trusty molar mass of nitric acid and there we go and we get 27 grams needed problem number four is where we actually have the known mass of our solute going into a solution that will be 455 milliliters so here I simply do the molarity expression and sort of expand it to where the, the numerator will have the mass divided by the molar mass and then over the volume of the solution notice how I turn milliliters into liters that is absolutely essential and we get a concentration of 0.23 molar of uh, nitric acid by the way really quick just to tie that into pH if you've seen the video regarding concentration and pH if we take the negative log of our concentration here which is 0.23 and I'll do that right here hit our negative log in 0.23 we find a pH of 0.64 that's pretty strong now in reality in most cases we can, we won't have our hands on really 100 percent pure nitric acid even most the most concentrated stuff available to most people is only so is only maybe 40 50 percent strength and so we we have to essentially use molarity in terms of a series of dilutions rather than mass it is possible to produce almost 100 percent pure by ma by mass nitric acid getting into the 97 98 percentiles but it's very difficult very expensive very unlikely you would have your hands on it and you really shouldn't and definitely wouldn't want to be working with it in a high school chemistry lab so in the case of nitric acid we're normally dealing with various volumes to moles ratios but it is theoretically possible if you have extremely concentrated stuff to be viewing it in terms of mass converted to moles however a lot of the times we're making solutions with things that are dissolved solids so we definitely are going to get, be getting into plenty of solutions that do involve taking a known mass of a dissolved solid and dissolving it into an aqueous solution. So you'll see this a lot in those cases when we're making solutions of ionic salts.